Well, hi folks, my name is Dan Lenny from fstopacademy.com uh, with another video in this series of working with DaVinci Resolve 9 Lite and the Tangent Devices Elements Panel. In this video, I want to take that a stage further and start showing you how to do secondary correction and start to use keys. And that's again where this can become a very powerful tool here. So let's just go here to our secondary um, window here. And what I want to do is let's find this shot here, for example. Um, and let's say we wanted to make the green aspect of the scene a little more yellow. So what I would do is I take my color picker here. If I click on this, um, this uh, picker tool and then click on highlight, by taking the picker tool and just taking this, for example, what I'm doing is I'm just isolating the green of the scene. Now, what we can do is we can use our mouse here and adjust where that color is saturation and where it's happening. Uh, and then we can use our width and, and adjust, you know, the, the slope. And this is, this is just keying. Now, I'm very, very new to this. But I've done a little bit of green screen, a little bit of chroma key. So it's exactly the same principle. We're just picking a color in the scene. And then we're trying to just isolate that color and that color alone. So that when we apply the color, the, the, the color grading to it, it's only going to affect that aspect of the scene. And this, um, this tool here, <clears throat> the highlight, means it just, it's just giving you a gray background to show you what you're pulling a key from. Now you can do this with your mouse or you can use the knobs and buttons panel here. So if we were to look at the uh, keying, highlight qualifier, what we're seeing here is we've got the qualifier, we've got highlight uh, and we've got the saturation, the luminance, There we go, so I just discovered that. So we can, rather than using the selection range, um, we can just use these buttons here. Um, and then what we can do is we can adjust the controls that you can see here using the knobs and dials. Uh, so, Let's just have a look at the saturation. So, okay, right, so there we go. And, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of learning this as I go. I, there, there isn't a manual for this. I mean, DaVinci do have a, a set of, um, it's like a PDF, which shows you where things are. But in actual fact, I found myself just, as I learn this area here, wondering where it corresponds on these panels. And I found that to be quite useful. So we've got HS, HSLQ and HSLQ2. So HSLQ gives us our hue uh, and our blur controls. So what we can do here is we can adjust the center. So if I just, um, there we go. So now I wanna go back to my HSLQ1 and we're gonna just deal with the hue here. And we're gonna just look at the centering of that. And what we're trying to do here is get all the green and I want to isolate just this green um, field of, of corn. So what I can do is adjust, adjust the width. And this is a little bit trial and error. You're just looking to go, well, how, how broad a range of that green do I want to keep in that frame? I've obviously got some other green there that I want to get rid of. So um, the softness. Uh, you can see that's coming in there. So that's okay. I want to just pull that down. If, as I, if I increase that softness, obviously I'm bringing aspects of the sky in. So I don't want to see the sky. Um, so what you can also notice is, is, is just how this is affecting 
the overall look. And, and I think what's useful with these controls is because they're pots, you know, they're, that you can, you can control it very, very subtly. And that's starting to look kind of like I want. Now, let's put some blur into there and see where we can go with that. Got a bit of that there, that's cool. Okay, um, obviously getting a bit of the sky coming in there. So I'll just reduce that out of the blue. We move that more towards here. There we go. So, you know, this this is going to be fiddly. And, and I've got to admit, this is the bit this is, I found the hardest so far. It's just understanding what these different parameters do. And it's just like pulling a key. It can be subtleties of just adjusting different parameters. For the purpose of this, I could spend a lot more time on this, but I think that's giving you an idea of different controls. Next thing we can do is go into our HSL Q2 menu, and then we'll be looking at our saturation, which is this area here, and our luminance. So we can look at that there. That's looking pretty good. And then okay, so that's that's going to work for me now. Now I'm going to take the um, the uh, the highlight area off, so I can look at the whole scene. And I'm now going to be looking at using my gain control to add that bit of yellow that I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push away from the blue and in to the yellow. Now if I do this in a very extreme fashion, you can see if I go before and after. And if I wanted to just isolate what I'm doing to the yellow there, I've just picked out, it's just affecting the green areas that I've keyed. It's not really affecting this darker area. It's just affecting the corn. Do you see how powerful this is? If you were using Magic Bullet Looks, you'd just be putting a wash over everything. And what makes this so powerful is you can just pick out that area there and just work with that. Um, so that's really, really interesting. And I think, um, you know, this is where this panel becomes very powerful because the subtleties you start to feel the panel and you know whilst you can certainly do everything with a mouse and hey there's no reason why you couldn't just buy these two aspects of the panel if your budget was a bit tighter start with these two panels and use your mouse for these kind of finer points but um certainly when you've got the ability to have all, all, all four you just start to work from the panel and you're just looking at the screen and you're using this control device to really um it's like it's a very kind of tactile way to color grade and um, let me just do another one here let me just add another serial node and let's just pick the sky this time because that's a nice uh, straightforward one and we'll just pick the blue of the sky and as you can see there um we can adjust that so we can maybe make that a bit wider. So we'll pick out that there. Um, let's see if we can make that. This is very, very new to me. It is the hardest part. And I think it is the part that this is where, it, this is where great experience color has come in. Is understanding is that blue, you know, are other parts of the scene more saturated, less saturated? Is, is the hue of the colour one way or the other? And so you just end up having a, a bit of a, a trial and error to, to get it nice and clean. So that's, that's the big difference there. See, I've just added that adjusting the saturation 
it's picked out different parts of the scene. Now, what I want to do to this is let's say I want to I'll take this um, highlight off here. If I want to adjust just that, let's say it, let's just for this for argument's sake, put it into a kind of very magenta look. You'll notice there that it's just picked out the parts of the sky that had a blue, which I managed to pull a key from. Now, obviously, I don't want it to look like that, but it just goes to demonstrate the power of this because it's only affecting that. It's not affecting any of the green. So let's just, for the sake of this, maybe make this a little bit more... Um, a bit more yellowy just to uh that's not really working maybe a bit more maybe enhance it a bit more like that i mean that's a pretty pretty extreme look but you know um there's before there's after so you know you can work very quickly with this panel um and and i think it's it is about having that intuitive tactile experience uh, in the next video i want to go and move on to using power windows um, because that's something that's really powerful with the software and something that again you have to agree with the software like magic blue looks but nowhere near the power involved in this software so um again hope that's been useful and uh, check out the other videos we've got and and more uh, tutorials on the f-stop academy website and i look forward to speaking to you again soon